All right, hope you guys are doing okay today. Um, wanted to make a quick video that introduces you guys to the Aztecs. Uh, here's a good little photo, I think, of uh, some of the things that went on with the civilization. The Aztecs were actually down in uh, modern day Mexico, around modern day Mexico City, is kind of where their uh, capital was at. But looking at this photo, lots of things going on. So we got some uh, uh, fire going on, some human sacrifice. Sounds like it's going to be an interesting group of people. So just moving ahead so you guys kind of have a heads up on who these people are. Uh, we'll get started. So um, if you go down to modern day Mexico, uh, here's a picture of just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, uh, you see here this green section on this map that is the Aztecs empire and there is a lake right there towards the north uh, that's lake texcoco and next to that's tenochtitlan that's where the main city of the government of the aztec empire was so uh, just so you kind of have an idea on uh, where this these people are from uh, i just want to show you all this map so who are they first of all they were warlike aztec uh nomadic people who they arrived around the Valley of Mexico around the 1200s AD, Anno de Benasso, about 1200 years after the birth of Jesus. Uh, other things that are going on in the world at this time would be things like um, you have Muslim expansion going on in Africa. Uh, Silk Road trade has opened back up. Uh, this is also close to about the time where the Black Death is going to take place, the bubonic plague. So. Uh, just know there's a lot going on in the world, but if you go to the other side of the world, the hemisphere that we're in, the Americas, um, this is one of the most powerful groups of this time. And these people had wandered in year, uh, for years in search of a land that they believe they had been promised by one of their main gods, Quetzalcoatl. If you'll look at that picture um, to the right side of the screen, there's a picture of the serpent feathered god, Quetzalcoatl. Anyways, they believe that he had been promising them uh, some land. So, as it goes, these people will eventually take shelter in a place around modern-day Lake Texcoco, and they'll create a city known as Tenochtitlan. Now, if you look at the Mexican flag there, that's what that is there in the bottom right. You have the tricolor flag, the green, white, and red. And in the middle, there is some animals. You have a uh, an eagle with a serpent in its mouth, and that was actually a sign uh, for the early Aztecs, where they believed, where they saw a, uh, well, the promise from their gods, um, that they would find a land, and the symbol for that would be, you would see an eagle with a serpent in its mouth. And Mexico kind of embraced the spirit of the Aztec warrior and put that on their flag uh, as they gained independence. But anyways, a uh, neat little flag. Uh, it does relate to ancient history, so pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, here's a city of what an artist, uh, this is not a primary source, but it's a secondary source of what, when you read about Tenochtitlan, things that you might see. So some things you might say is, oh, I see temples, I see great buildings, huge statues, maybe relating to deities or gods they believed in. Uh, you see, uh, especially the one, if you look at the middle one, uh, where there's people standing on top of the steps, that would have been Templo Mayor, which is the great uh, temple of the Aztecs. We'll talk more about that here in a second. But you can tell they're very religious people. Uh, they have a market there in the bottom left and lots of boats and water. And as y'all know, water's life. Without water and transportation, it's kind of hard to thrive as a civilization. So Tenochtitlan was definitely a booming place. Um, life in Aztec Empire, um, it's not like every social structure that we've learned about this year. We've learned about some in which you could not move up and down the ladder of social hierarchy. But for them, you could. Um, but there were just two main things that were expected. First of all, men, if you were a man and you were healthy, you were expected to be a member of a warrior class. Um, doesn't mean that you had any special privileges. It just means that you basically had to serve in honor of the Aztec Empire and for their glory. Um, so all men who were capable had to do that. And then also women were expected to stay at home and serve the family. As you can see here, you had ruler and his family at the top, government officials, priests, high-ranking warriors, as it says there, and then commoners. So most of us would fall in the middle. Below that, though, you had the peasant class. And as y'all are pretty familiar with, peasants usually dealt with agrarian things, farming, livestock. That was the type of things that they took care of. Um, and then at the very bottom of society, slaves. Who, who would fall into this? 
Are they any different than peasants? Yes, they are. Slaves literally pretty much had no rights, and they were usually captured people from other groups. So the Aztecs, as we mentioned, they were a warrior society. Um, when they had war, you know, they would take in survivors and sometimes make them slaves or sacrifice them, which we'll get to in a second. But anyways, these people, though, the Aztecs, they believed that it was their job, as stated by their gods, to conquer all people in the universe. So henceforth, that made them warriors. And as I mentioned a second ago, uh, people they captured sometimes were slaves. Sometimes they were used as sacrifices. You can see here in this picture on the right, uh, that's Templo Mayor, the great temple. Uh, you can see the lake in the background and beautiful mountains in the Valley of Mexico. But what's that coming down the steps? Um, that's actually human blood. Uh, they were big proponents of human sacrifice. Um, just their understanding of the world at the time. Um, that, that's what they did. And, uh, you know, thousands and thousands would happen within the time frame of a month. But this was a very tall step. You can see here, you got priests standing at the top and you got people standing at the bottom, many who are probably going up to be sacrificed. Imagine, you know, the final steps you take uh, it might be up those steps, you know. So if you, you know, were to see, you know, this like paint it or see it in person or something or see remnants, uh, you know, something to think about. It was a place of lots of death, lots of blood. Um, but anyways, here's a picture of it again. You can see lots of people in attendance for some sort of ceremony. The sun setting down on the people there around uh, Tenochtitlan. Anyways, life in the Aztec Empire, um, like their Mesoamerican predecessors, they excelled in agriculture. Uh, the Olmecs, the Mayans, they were big proponents of growing things. Uh, medicine was something they exceeded in. They learned how to treat burn, swelling, pain, uh, seizures even, and hysteria, which is, you know, mental uh, issues. So, I mean, they probably... Uh, used different types of drugs and uh, hypnosis practices to help people calm down those fears. Also, chocolate. You like chocolate? Thank the Aztecs. A big uh, thing they used was cacao beans, uh, and they would mix it with liquid, and it would make like liquid chocolate. And we've adapted that today to make modern hard chocolate. Um, and then you had things like chinampas. These are really cool. Um, what they were is they were fertile plots of land that they would use in shallow water to help them grow plants. Uh, you can see here that people could walk across them. Water would come under and build strong roots. Um, and it would get all the water it needed. And you could just take a boat or a canoe and paddle between these chinampas and grow what you need to. So they were innovators. Okay. They were innovators. Uh, but the fall of the Aztecs, uh, just as quickly as it seems like they rise and they take over, uh, they fall really quickly. 1492, all of y'all know what that date represents. I'm not a big teacher of dates, but I'm a big fan of chronology. 1492, what you need to know is uh, Europe has now come to the Americas. Around the year 1000, it's believed that the Vikings came in. But in 1492, Christopher Columbus, on a voyage, comes and he doesn't mean to find the Americas, but... He's trying to find a new route to Asia to trade using Silk Road route. So he was wanting to make his own little maritime Silk Road using the, I guess, the uh, waterways, the oceans. And he made a far greater discovery, and that's the Americas. Uh, without this discovery, you could argue that uh, history would be much, much different, especially in Europe and, you know, United States. Are we a thing? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the future could be totally different. Someone else found out this place uh, before the Spanish and then the British and the French, and they all start getting involved. Portuguese. I mean, history could be a lot different. So anyways, uh, as Christopher Columbus found this, it became a rat race, I guess you could say, to see who could um, find the most land. So... Uh, Expeditions were led by men known as conquistadors. These men were often poor nobles who wanted a way up in society in Spain and places like that. And their motto were known as the was known as the three Gs. Okay, God, gold, glory. God obviously representing that they believed that when they came here, they needed to Christianize the new world, as they called it. The Americas. These people were pagans. They were polytheists. They believed in spirits of nature. And the Spanish didn't like that. They believe that these people need to be Catholic Christians. Um, 
Also, gold. Obviously, they were planning on getting very, very rich uh, while they did this. And glory. How much notoriety can I get for my country and for myself? Can I become a famous conquistador, someone who goes down in history? Obviously, for the, uh, some of these people, that was the case. Some of them have gone down as being uh, a little bit deceitful and doing some things that they probably shouldn't have. But um, yes, a lot of them did achieve those three things. One of the most famous conquistadors is actually going to be the guy who conquers the Aztecs. His name was Hernan Cortez, and he heard of the wealth of the Aztec region, and he brought along with him uh, over 500 soldiers, 16 horses, 14 cannons, and dogs. And this was all in 1519. When Cortez arrives, though, the Aztec emperor's name is Montezuma. Some people say Moctezuma, but I'll say Montezuma, greeted him, and he had always heard stories that their feathery serpent god, Quetzalcoatl, was going to come back. Um, he looked at Cortez. He saw the fair skin. He saw the light-colored hair, and he said, this has got to be Quetzalcoatl. So Cortez takes advantage of this and deceives the Aztec. So uh, Montezuma says, look, you know, I have a trusted advisor here. Uh, her name's Malatzen. All right. Uh, she was a Mayan. But anyways, he gives her to Cortez to help. And as Cortez talks to Malinzin, he finds out that the Aztecs are hated, not just by a few people, but by basically every single group of people they had taken over. So she informs Cortez that, look, the Aztec people, they don't like Montezuma. Those who've been conquered by the Aztecs, they don't like Montezuma. You have things that we need, weapons, people, armor, with your help and our help, we can take down the Aztecs. So Cortez says, you know what? That is definitely the case. So Cortez is going to trust Malatzin and she's going to help him form alliances with tribes who hated the Aztecs. And, you know, the Aztecs were the fiercest warriors of Mesoamerica at this time. The Spanish take them down like it's nothing. And it's no accident uh, that you know, the stars lined up for them. Um, the Spanish, I don't think, meant to deploy this tactic, but it happened. Uh, for instance, let's say I've never had the flu, and I go hang out with a bunch of people on a Friday night. After school, we go play board games, go to karaoke, or go grab a bite to eat, and they all have the flu. If I've never been exposed to that, I'm probably going to catch the flu. All right? Same thing happens to the Aztecs. The Spanish, all these European people had been exposed to these diseases because of their large cities, their vast trading routes, that they were comfortable with um, different sicknesses. However, um, the Aztecs didn't need just suns, uh, excuse me, swords and gunfire, but they also are going to accidentally expose the Aztecs to things like measles, smallpox, yellow fever. Uh, the list goes on and on. And historians predict that about 80 to 90 percent of Aztecs are going to die from this alone, not even getting shot at, not even getting stabbed or speared or, you know, just massacred. It's a lot of it's going to be disease. So the Spaniards are then going to move as they slowly are collapsing the Aztec empire and people are dying from disease and plague. Uh, they're eventually going to take the city of Tenochtitlan, and Montezuma does not believe that Cortez is a bad guy yet. He says, you know, uh, I, I trust this guy still. I really think he's Montez, uh, excuse me, Quetzalcoatl. And the Aztec, uh, by the time they decide, look, Cortez is not our god. He is uh, a dude who is greedy and wants our land. Uh, it's too late. And Montezuma is going to be killed and attack. And uh, the Spanish are going to totally set up a dominant empire in uh, modern-day Mexico and southern United States and large parts of South America, which is interesting because you think about what language is spoken in those regions today, a very popular language in uh, the southern United States and in um, Mexico, South America is indeed Spanish. So maybe now that gives you some insight as to why the Spanish are in those areas, why Spain, you know, conquered so much. Uh, and, you know, history might be a lot different if they didn't do that. I mean, what would we be like? Uh, how far along would these civilizations have progressed before something else happened? 
right? Because uh, history changes quickly and it's just something to know about. Um, anyways, lots of good resources out there. There's a lot of people that argue that Spanish and tense were not good. They were good. They were just. I'm not going to get on that. Anyways, just wanted to share some of this story with y'all. Um, and this is where we're at, the Aztec Empire in uh, the Mesoamerican region of Mexico. That's kind of where they're at. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys have a great day and uh, y'all make good choices, do the right things, and keep being awesome.